In order for athletes to use their bodies like a spring, eccentric and isometric actions are exceptionally important as the eccentric action places a pre-stretch on the muscle tissue. Eccentric training, especially in a traditional sense, tends to mean slow tempo. However, to derive the greatest throwing-related performance benefits, high-velocity eccentric training is the ticket. Slower tempo eccentric training has benefits as well, such as helping to teach beginner trainees new movements, having an analgesic and healing effect for athletes with tendinopathy, which is more related to the tempo than the muscle action type, and increasing time under tension for hypertrophic purposes. For more advanced athletes, however, high-velocity eccentrics can have a significant impact on performance. A typical force velocity curve is viewed in the context of concentric muscle actions. This curve shows that as velocity increases, force decreases. Eccentric actions are not subject to these same rules. As the velocity of eccentric actions increases, so does force. How is this relevant to throwing? As an eccentric action occurs, the elastic tissues, so muscle, tendon, fascia, are stretched, which means they store elastic energy that can be utilized as the tissue returns to its starting length. The tissue, the faster an eccentric action can occur, the higher the output will be, provided that an athlete is strong enough eccentrically to control this movement. In order to improve the ability of an athlete to withstand high eccentric velocity, the stiffness of the springs must be increased. The springs, or muscles, tendons, and fascia, exist on a continuum of compliant to stiff, with greater stiffness being associated with higher velocity performances. This makes sense as a compliant or stretchy tendon will take longer to pull on the skeleton than a stiff tendon will when a muscle action occurs. Stiffness can be enhanced through both heavy strength training and high velocity movements. Greater stiffness means that energy can be more efficiently transferred between body segments. In a complex movement such as throwing, this means that energy can be more effectively built like a wave. The less energy that is lost as heat throughout the process, the higher the ultimate output will be. For example, as the arm is flipped up heading into foot strike, the pec will lengthen eccentrically quickly prior to catching or reaching end range when the stretch shortening cycle will engage and reflexively pull the arm through to ball release. If this is timed properly, the force and velocity of this reflexive action will be higher than what can be accomplished volitionally. However, if the tissue around the shoulder complex is not stiff enough, some of this energy will be lost as heat and the arm will not be accelerated as effectively. So this is just one of the reasons that we like to use fast eccentrics um, in a performance context more than the slow tempo eccentrics. Check back for more on this later this week.